There's a lot of detail in there. It was very important that the textural detail uh, was emphasized. My camera is so close to that ball. It's on a remote control, wide angle lens, and it's kind of the frame within the frame. Well, it's a special image, it's a lucky image. Why should the elephant have moved round? I'm the first to say, you know, I am not a National Geographic photographer, I'm a fine art photographer. And I think there's a massive difference between the two. My cameras go through an awful lot. You look at the mud, that mud will be from Africa. I get them kicked, I get them eaten by lions, and they're, they're sturdy, they're robust, they're not precious. I'm not a precious person in the field. I need cameras I can just throw around. Um, I think the dynamic range on the D800, D810 series is strong, and the D850, it was quite a thrill to be the first person in the world to be using one. In a picture like this, where there are lots of, it's ethereal, there are lots of shades of white, one of my favorite quotes in photography is uh, from the American photographer Diane Arbus, and she said, uh, a photograph is a secret within a secret. The more it tells you, the less you know. Everything's just about perfect on this picture, and if uh, you saw the polar bear's face, it wouldn't be as strong a picture as it is. I didn't really have any preconception of what I would see because you can't, you can't Google some of these places. It was built after the Korean War, so I think 1955, and it looks like that as well. We called it Blade Runner because, well, partly Ridley Scott's a great inspiration, but it does almost look like the set of Blade Runner. And I had to do it in color. I just thought there was too many visual double takes in terms of the color, the greens, I thought it had to be in color as a shot.